The relegation battle is massively heating up as we come to the last few games in the season. There's seven games left and seven cup finals for pretty much four teams at the bottom end of the Premier League. So today we're going to be getting on four fans from each of them four clubs to discuss where they think their club will finish. Obviously, I'm joined by the lovely Ben here as he joined in our last video of this kind of style. So we're going to be re breaking down and reacting to how these fans think the relegation battle will pan out. First up, we've got Everton, a team who realistically start the season nowhere near being in a relegation battle. They started fairly well until November when they got a hefty points deduction. And since December 16th, they've not actually won a Premier League game. The galvanisation from the points deduction has officially gone. We haven't won a game in forever. And since we last won a game, we now sit bottom of the Premier League in terms of points accrued by other teams since we last won a game. We've only scored 30 goals. That's only three more than Sheffield United. We can't go on like this if we are to stay in the Premier League year on year. We're actually very lucky that there are worse teams than us. I know we've had points deducted and we shouldn't be where we are, but that doesn't take away from the point that we are awful. People are turning on Deitch. I haven't turned on him, but I can see why people are turning on him. We lack so many ideas in terms of chance creation. We're never going to get anywhere playing like this. We can't expect people to turn up because the players haven't been turning up for weeks. We've got Jared Branthwaite, who is unreal, but he can't do it all on his own. He's a centre-back. He does his job. He keeps the goals out most of the times, but... The rest of the players need to look at themselves. Calvert-Lewin has won the most aerial deals in the Premier League. That's good for nothing if you're not putting the ball in the back of the net. I used to love all of our players and would look up to them and it's just lost. And there's a whole new generation of Everton fans that aren't going to feel the same way as I did growing up. So obviously Everton sit, I think it is now in 16th, just about four points away from Luton Town who are 18th. But as he said, it's just not been good enough in so many different aspects of their game. They've got some great, brilliant individuals in the likes of Bramfway, Onana, Pickford, Tarkowski playing really well this season. But they've also got absolutely nothing in the final third. Everton are now sitting as the 10th highest XG team in the whole of the Premier League but have scored the second least amount of goals in the league as well. As he said in the video, just three more than bottom place Chef United, who have been basically deemed as absolutely woeful by everyone. Although they haven't been great, as he said, there are probably three worse teams than them in this season. They're still pretty solid defensively. They don't ship too many goals when they do lose. Obviously, going to St. James's Park and getting a point is absolutely ginormous for them. And I think they should should just have enough to escape. Yeah, they should be looking at that and should be looking at teams below them and thinking that they can still stay up. But I feel for Kai, you can kind of see the hope draining from him a little bit. And I think that's what a lot of Everton fans feel like. I think from an outside perspective, when they got the points deduction, I think a lot of people thought that they've got the right manager and it's the right sort of club and fan base to kind of galvanise them to get them through it. But I think that has definitely faded with the poor performances and it's not always been about the performance you know they've kind of they've gone away to Man United and put in a decent shift and given away two penalties and like you said they are pretty solid at the back and it's just certain games recently where they've just kind of been the architects of their own downfall Seamus Coleman one of their most experienced players with the own goal on Saturday against Bournemouth under no pressure it's just these in the running you can kind of tell it's getting them to get into them a little bit obviously a massive point for them at Newcastle um again a moral moment of quality from Isaac for the goal, which they can't really do much about. Jordan Pickford stepped up massively in that game. A great performance from him. And you're going to need those leaders in that running because it's not necessarily the worst out of the teams around them, but they've still got to play Burnley on Saturday, which is going to be, you know, if there's a definition for a six-pointer, it's that game. They've got to go to Chelsea. They've got to play Forest. They've got to play Brentford, Luton and Sheffield United, as well as a Merseyside derby in there as well. So I think, look, I think they'll just have enough. But I think if it wasn't for some of the teams that had come up from the championship last season and, you know, maybe the fact that they've underperformed slightly or the quality hasn't necessarily been there, I think Everton would be 100% looking over their shoulders with that little bit more fear than they maybe are now. On to my club, and I will try and put my bias aside here, I promise you, but also, not just my club, but also Everton's opponents on Saturday in Burnley. They've had a very strange season, to say the least. I think against Man City, the start of the season, people thought, you know what, maybe they will meet expectations, what people thought they could do and push for a mid-table finish. 
However, the defensive side of this team has been absolutely woeful and some interesting decisions from manager Vincent Company with the likes of James Trafford staying in for 28 games despite having Murich on the bench who was championship goalkeeper of the season last season. With eight games left, we are only four points off the drop and we have complete reason to believe that we actually are still in a fight. Our last three games, we are currently undefeated, which is by a good length, our best piece of form the entire season. And those performances meant something. The most recent away at Chelsea may just be an outlier, but we are hoping after Wolves at home could be the turning point of the season alongside Brentford at home as well. As a Burnley fan, it feels good to be at least in the conversation within the midst of actually staying up. If we do however that is a different story i personally think that it could be too little too late however if we actually do make a fight and go into final few days i would still be quite happy with the fact that we are giving ourselves some pride and, and some hope going into it we are getting the form at the right time of the season and we need to capitalize now it absolutely is now or never and with our next three games four games actually involving sheffield united everton wolves and brighton we've got to get results and if we don't in those games then it will be over however there is one thing for certain at one point seemed impossible is now absolutely not the case and with only one win can put us in the midst of being one point away from safety we have to believe so up the clouds. Yeah, to be fair, I said this, I think I've been saying this since maybe October, November, that I did think things would click for Burnley and it was just a matter of when and whether or not it would be too little too late. Some brilliant results in the last four. I mean, going away at Stamford Bridge and drawing, only being hard done by with an awful refereeing decision. Then get a point against Wolves, who although they had a poor squad, Burnley absolutely dominated that game and again were let down by a very poor officiating decision. I think they've had some brilliant results as of late, especially... But again, as Viz said, it's not really enough for them. They should have been going on like this way earlier in the season. And I think a lot of it is down to some strange decisions by company, as I said before. But as he said, what was once pretty much impossible, 11 points away from safety just five games ago, as it stands right now, Burnley are six points away from Nottingham Forest with Sheffield United, Everton and Forest to play in their last few games. So for me, and probably this is a little bit of my bias coming out, I could see it going to the final day, but I just can't see Burnley having quite enough to stay up. But the one thing I will say, they're definitely making a fight out of it. Yeah, for sure. And I think as well, like Viz said, I mean, you're coming into form at the right time. You've kind of been screwed over by a couple of poor refereeing decisions. So that kind of can help to almost galvanise the fan base a little bit. I know you're going to be without company on the touchline for the next few games, which is a bit of a blow, especially going into such a big one at Everton. But you mentioned Forest there. Now, Forest and Everton, I think, have got to play each other still. So, you know, that's a bit of a six-pointer. Maybe you won't be able to catch Everton, but a result for Everton there drags Forest back into it. And then that's three points made up if you get a result on that same weekend as well. And like you said, all, all you can do is take it to the last game of the season when you then got to play Nottingham Forest, which is just absolutely huge like it doesn't get bigger than that and if you can go there just three points behind them i'm not exactly sure what the goal difference situation is but if you can reel them in to the point where you can catch them on the last game then that is a huge achievement for burnley i do think you look four games unbeaten now i know chelsea haven't exactly been anything this uh, special this season but to go there and get a point with 10 men in the way that you did should give you encouragement for the bigger away games that you've got coming up at old trafford and most importantly at everton this weekend that is a huge huge game so the great escape could be on it feels a little bit too little too late but like i said if you can get to the last couple of games of the season and you're in touch and distance of forest then it's game on nottingham forest and another team that were affected by a points deduction early in the season which really probably did derail their season as well although they were still in and about this relegation battle for me that points deduction kind of knocked brentford away from being dragged into it and really made Forest as serious, serious contenders. However, they did go and get a massive three points against Fulham, which obviously separated that gap from Burnley, with Burnley only getting a draw against Wolves, and obviously creating a gap on Luton as well, with Luton currently losing to Arsenal as we're recording. I think Forest, again, another team with so much quality. I'm actually not too sure how they're actually in this position, if I'm honest. Maybe, maybe poor management, maybe just a few things not going right. But they've still got Chris Wood, who scored over 10 goals again, which is... I don't, I don't actually know how the bloke How does it. he do it? I think he's going to go down to the wire. Um, probably going to be decided on the last weekend, which is it's fun for a neutral, but not for those involved. In terms of Sheffield United, I think they're gone. Burnley, I like what they're doing as of late, but I think it is 
too little too late um they're just picking up at the wrong time in my opinion if they'd have done this three four games ago then they'd have probably given themselves a much better chance of catching um whoever finishes in the in the fourth bottom spot luton obviously the fairy tale season for them coming up to the premier league and if it wasn't Forest directly involved, then I'd have liked, liked them to stay up because I, I, I like an underdog story. Everton, I think even with another points deduction, they've got a, a good enough team to get out of it. And in terms of Forest, my team, listen, when, when we got the points deduction and we were sat a, a point below Luton, I turned and said that if we can't beat Luton over a nine game, nine game shootout, we deserve to go down, and not, that's not no disrespectful. To, that's no disrespect to Luton, but in terms of the, the quality Forest have, the money we've spent, um, we've got some very very top players, and I just think we need a good a good manager to take us forward in the summer if we stay up. But I, I think Forest will just have enough uh, by a couple of points, uh, and Luton sadly go down in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, as we touched on before, we said obviously this team has a lot of individual quality. Um, and as he said in the video, it just needs a proper manager to take them by the kind of scruff of it and drag them into being a proper Premier League side. However, this season, so far, in the last three games, they're unbeaten. Obviously, a massive win against, to be fair, an inconsistent Fulham who do blow hot and cold. Um, the three above safety as well, which, to be fair, gives them a good opportunity to try and create some breathing space. Obviously, Luton, as we said it before, are losing right now. And Forrest are now heading into a game against Tottenham, which you'd expect them to not win. But as well, you also probably expect the Tottenham to put more than just two goals past Luton. So it's one of them where I do think, again, Tottenham are a side that you could possibly cause an upset against um, when they're not on it. No offence to you, Ben. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, they've also still got Everton, Sheffield United and obviously the massive one in Burnley to play on the final days of the season. And I think for me, Forest have enough quality, as we've said, and they have the right fixtures to create a big enough gap to get them away from Burnley or Luton or whoever it is that is chasing them come that final game. But is it, again, as you say that, with the way Forest have been, although they are unbeaten in three, I still think they can be fairly unpredictable in the way that they turn up. Sometimes... I think they've been brilliant to watch this season. Great in transition. I know when United went to their place, they were excellent. They were excellent against Fulham. But also at times this season, I know earlier on in the season when Burnley went there, they were awful. And they have been awful in so many games. But they get these big results at random times. Like going to St. James's Park and Chris Wood scoring a hat-trick. Things like that. They've also got Chris Wood on form. And when he's on form, he does, he does score goals. They shouldn't be going down with the quality they've got. But I wouldn't rely on Tottenham if you're a Burnley, Everton or Luton fan for, Lottingham Forest, for Spurs to get a result against Forest on Sunday because of how unpredictable we can be. But yeah, you're looking at that one thinking that they're probably not going to pick up points there they've got City at home as well but again they took points off City at home last season um, not necessarily in the same predicament as they are now but they can do it against the big sides they've done it against Manchester United they went away to Newcastle as you mentioned they've got a performance like that in them so it wouldn't surprise me if they pick enough points to comfortably stay up. I think watching the game last night, the Fulham game, Morgan Gibbs-White is the key man. And we talked about the individual they've quality they've got. He dragged them through that first half. He was absolutely superb. Callum Hudson-Odoi as well showed real quality for the goal. And I think, yeah, I think they should just have the, enough quality to do it. On to the last team in today's video and probably the miracle workers of the season. The team that, if I wasn't a Burnley fan, I would be 100% backing them all the way. Luton Town have had a amazing season. And I know people talk about kind of the hard work, the hard graft that they've got within them. But I think for me, there's a lot of quality in this side. Teams like players like Ross Barkley, sorry, uh, players like Alfie Doughty. I really like uh, I really like uh, Mengi and Kabore as well. Ogbeni, Adebayo. There's a lot, of a lot of players in this team that do have quality to shock teams and really fit. Rob Edwards' system. The odds are against us. We have played great football attacking-wise this season, but our defensive side has led us to the position we face now. Never say never with Luton. In our first season back in the Championship, during our rise back up the league, we ended that with a last-day survival when we defeated Blackburn Rovers. 
considering all the adversity we have faced in recent years, we have instilled a siege mentality in our squad who will give it their all until it's all said and done. When you have someone like Ross Barkley in the team who has had a career resurgence at Luton Town, anything is possible. I have said all season that I don't want to rely on points deductions to stay in this league and we simply must convert points in our games to control our own destiny and despite the valiant fights we have put up, we have only won five games this season and I think we need at least three more wins from our remaining games in order to have a real fighting chance at securing our Premier League status. This will be a very difficult challenge but if Luton Town stay up this season or not, it will not be the last time the top flight see us. What is most important to me is those who considered Luton Town a joke have been forced to eat their words and that for me is satisfying in its own right. Yeah, it's an important point for me at the end. I've so many, so many creators, pundits, mainstream media outlets were all saying Luton were good as down. But I said in the summer, I actually did a video on it, saying that they could very much so shock everyone. However, for me, out of these teams that we're discussing in today's video, they've probably got the hardest running for me. I mean, there is still points there to be won with playing Everton and an inconsistent Fulham. But they've also not won since the 30th of January, where obviously they had a really nice spell, beat Brighton 4-1. But since then, they've not won a game. Um, and although, again, as he said, they're attacking, they've been decent going forward, nothing amazing. Obviously, they're in a relegation battle for a reason. But defensively, they have let in some silly goals. At times, I think they're very, very vulnerable. The line, Through the lines, they've not got too much pace at the back, things like that. And that's where when you're playing against these top sides, I mean, Erlen Haaland, I think he scored the same goal four times against them in the Cup, just breaking through the, them lines. Um, and as if, again, if I wasn't a Burnley fan, I would absolutely love Luton to stay up. But I think the most important thing, and as he said, it doesn't matter if Luton go down this season, really. They've set themselves up with the way that they were in the summer to get themselves straight back up. They've got a squad which is realistically top-end championship other than maybe a couple in the likes of Ross Barkley and Doughty, but not many of them players will be leaving. I mean, Barkley will likely get his big move, possibly, or maybe he won't after what happened when he left Everton. But I think if they go down, they'll be straight back up. And as he said, this is not the last time Luton are going to be in the Premier League they will very much so get themselves back up here in the next two or three years. And then the club will already be so much more structured, so better structured to be a Premier League outfit. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I think it's about that feeling, isn't it? They've come up, they've made a really good account of themselves. The fans are proud of them every single week. That's what it's about. And that gives you that kind of extra 10% in terms of being able to go into these big games kind of without that sort of fear. They've had a little bit of a tricky run recently. They came to Spurs on Saturday, gave a good account of themselves. I think I've been really impressed with a lot of individual defensive performances. I was watching the Arsenal game before we came to record this and Mengi putting his body on the line and makeshift defence from loot and kind of constantly getting the blocks in. But maybe that defensive structure isn't quite there. I was quite frustrated from a Spurs point of view in on Saturday in terms of we weren't exploiting the gaps that they were actually leaving us. And then against teams that have that pace to be able to go in behind, they do struggle that little bit more, as you mentioned, against City. And I think that's how we cause them problems as well. But, you know, against the top teams that they have played, Tottenham have beaten them both times by a goal. Uh, by a goal. Arsenal only beat them by a goal at their place. Man City in the league, it was 2-1. You know, they got a draw against Liverpool. They should have beaten Manchester United. And I think, I mentioned it earlier, I was sort of, I was listening to some Luton Town fans on the train home after the game the other day, talking about the fact that Yes, it's great, but, you know, you, and the fact that they are showing that fight in these games, but there have been games where they've just thrown moments away and just haven't had that conviction. You think of Bournemouth as the standout example where they were 3-0 up at half time and let that game go. So it's those moments that they'll look back on. But I think overall, even if they do go down, the pride that's kind of been instilled there and also from a structural perspective, like you mentioned, they're in a much better place to be able to go down and then come back up. They'll be one of the better teams in the championship next season if they do go down, which I just just think they will. But again, you think about the kind of circumstances they've had to deal with this season, obviously losing their captain, Tom Lockyer, which was a huge, huge blow for them. But again, that was kind of able to galvanise them a little bit. And quite often these fairy tale stories have these moments of adversity and the way they've been able to get themselves through that, they should be... They should be proud of that. Right, so as we've seen, that's how fans think it's going to line up. A lot of, I don't think there's too much optimism, if I'm being honest. There's quite everyone's <laughs> pretty much down and accepted that they're all going down. Um, but I think for me, I can't see this relegation zone change. And I think we're going to see Sheffield United dead bottom, Burnley or Luton in them last two places and Forest and Everton surviving. 
However, I do think Luton have got the hardest run going into it as out of these teams. Burnley and Forest probably with the easier ones and the biggest games obviously playing each other. But yeah, I think for the reasons that we've mentioned in this video, like individual quality just being a separate, I Burnley picking up form far too late and Luton maybe just not having quite enough. Um, and I mean, it wasn't expected of them to do that as obviously so many teams shut them down. Not teams, sorry, so many pundits and creators already shut them down. But I think the teams like Luton should be absolutely buzzing with the season. Burnley coming into the end of it with a little bit more strength, a little bit more about them should be again happy forest who, who have kind of picked up a little bit of form three games unbeaten now again will be absolutely buzzing if they can avoid going down because the financial situation of the club the only team really that will be the most aggrieved is probably everton who start the season so well but have gone on to not win a game and i think it's four months now which is absolutely ridiculous i i i think i agree i think the only thing that might change is potentially Luton getting out of it for forest and again if it goes down to the the last game and Luton is still in with a chance and burnley get a result against forest and who knows i think Luton will keep themselves in it till the last couple of weeks for sure like with the fight that they've showed but my gut just tells me i think forest will just be all right i actually think the team, like you kind of alluded to it there, I think they'll comfortably stay up. And when I say comfortably, I mean in comparison to the last couple of seasons, is Everton in the sense that they're not in the kind of same, I guess it's not it's not as dark as it maybe was in terms of the, the situation, in terms of the points as it has been over the last couple of seasons, despite that points deduction. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, you know, think of the game against Palace a few, um, a few couple of seasons back now where they got themselves out of it. They had that moment. They got out on the last day last season with that home win as well. I don't think it will get to that point with Everton. I think they'll be safe before the last weekend of the season. But I actually think they'll be going into next season feeling a lot worse than these other teams and maybe feeling worse than they have done the last couple of years. I think that hope is kind of starting to drain from Everton, even if they do stay up. So much uncertainty around the club in terms of the financial situation is another point deduction potentially on the horizon. It's just a real, real mess for them. And despite the fact that I think they'll stay up, I think they're the ones that will, should be the most worried even out of all the teams, even if Forest or Luton go down. Like we said, Luton, I think, are in a good place to use it almost as a springboard to say we can compete at this level. We might not be ready right now, but we can come back up and give ourselves another go next year or in a couple of years' time. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and subscribe. Check out everyone who featured in this video. Their links will all be in the, subs in the description. Ben's will be as well. Uh, thank you so much for coming on again, mate. Um, and I yeah, enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.